Hello, and welcome to the Gilmore Girls Reading Challenge. This is not the Gilmore Girls tag. I know that there is one of those, but no, this is the list that some wonderful person compiled of all the books that were referenced in Gilmore Girls. So there are 339 books referenced in the TV show Gilmore Girls, the original series. I don't think the revival is included in this. And I thought it would be a fun challenge for people on booktube to go through the list and talk about all the ones that they've read. Because like I said, there are 339 books and I have not read very many of these. I'm very curious to see how other people match up to me. There's actually a poster that you can buy online that someone made that's like a huge poster and it has all the titles and there's little check boxes and you can try to read every single book. Um, I just printed up the list and and I've, I've been crossing things off. So these are all of the books mentioned in Gilmore Girls that I have personally read start to finish. There are lots of books on here that I read parts of for school but I, I, I've only read these books like fully all the way through. So let's talk about them. First one on the list that I've read is The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. I read this when I was in high school, not for class. I actually did have to read this for class, but I read it on my own first for the most embarrassing reason, guys. It's because I had a crush on someone and they told me that this was their favorite book and then they, they lent me a copy and I read it. I, yeah, I was, I think, 15 at the time, um, and I really liked this. I love Catcher in the Rye. A lot of people hate it because Holden Coalfield, Holden Coalfield, because Holden is so whiny, to which I say, that's the point. He's mentally ill. He's got stuff going on in his life. Like, give the guy a break and just appreciate it because he's funny. Next up is Charlotte's Web by E.B. White, which I only read for the first time last year. It was amazing, guys. That book was so good. I already knew everything about it because I grew up watching the movie, but oh my goodness, that book is really good. That is a classic that I definitely can recommend. It made me cry so much. The next book on this list that I have read is A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens, which I had to read for a literature class that I took in college. I'm forever bitter to this day about that class because it was supposed to be under the gender and women's studies umbrella and it was gender issues of the 19th century so we were supposed to be reading books that dealt with gender dynamics that were published in the 1800s but instead we had a super misogynistic male professor and he just kind of assigned whatever books he liked from that era and we never discussed gender we just talked about stupid things and we read a christmas carol of all things and i had to write a paper on this it was my final final paper that i had for the entire semester and i wrote it on the plane ride coming home from college. I probably read this book front to back 10 times because it's so short and I would just read through it trying to find the things that I wanted for my essay and I was had my laptop open on the plane and I'm writing my essay on the plane because I literally had no other time to finish it. The girl sitting next to me was just sitting and watching me write this, forming an essay in front of a stranger who's just watching every single word that appeared on the page that was coming from my head. <laughs> it was the most uncomfortable three and a half hours of my life. Next up is The Crucible by Arthur Miller. This is one that I read in high school for class and I actually read it because it's a play, not hard to read. I don't have a lot to say about this one. It's a pretty good play. It's a good show. Next one that I read is Encyclopedia Brown Boy Detective by Donald J. Sobel. I read so many Encyclopedia Brown books growing up. I just thought they were really fun. I like mysteries. That's a childhood classic. Next one I have is another J.D. Salinger book. It's Franny and Zoe. I read this when I was in college, just on my own. It resonated with me at a time where I really, really needed it. I know this book is weird, but I love it. It's one of my like all-time faves. Next thing I'm just gonna hold up my giant Shakespeare book is Hamlet by William Shakespeare. I think I did read this for the first time again when I was in high school. It's good. Hamlet is obviously one of Shakespeare's most famous and popular shows. It's not particularly my favorite, but you know, 
it's fine. The next two books are Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which I have obviously read and I love Harry Potter. For some reason, those are the only two Harry Potter books mentioned on Gilmore Girls. Next on the list is High Fidelity by Nick Hornby. I read this when I went through this weird phase my freshman year of college where I was like obsessed with Nick Hornby and I told everyone he was my favorite author and I read a bunch of Nick Hornby books in the span of a few months and then I never read anything by him again. <laughs> but I liked this book. I liked all the books that I read around that time. Maybe I should return to Nick Hornby. I don't think I would like this as much now as I did when I was like 18. But yeah, that's high fidelity. Next one that I've read is Holidays on Ice, Stories by David Sedaris. I've read a bunch of David Sedaris books. This one is maybe my least favorite of all of them just because it's more fiction-y than non-fiction. It's a book of short stories around Christmas and it's a decent book. Next one is The Lovely Bones by Alice Siebold. I read this twice, I think in high school. I know I read it more than once. I really, really loved this book. I haven't read it since then and I kind of have been wanting to reread it but it's not really on my imminent list of books to read, but I just remember thinking it was incredible. Next on the list is Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck. This is another one that I think that I read for my freshman year English class in high school, and I actually did read it because I wrote a paper on it, and it's so short, it's kind of hard not to finish it. I'm not a big fan of Of Mice and Men. Uh, it's so popular, but I don't like the, the setting of that book at all. It's not a time period or place that I'm interested in, and I don't like any of the characters. It's just, uh, I don't, I don't like that book. Next one is another Shakespeare play, and it is Othello. I actually stage managed a production of Othello, and so I have been over that script a million times. Othello is fantastic. It's it's so good. Next up is Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. I flew out to Connecticut to visit some family. I was just going by myself and it was like my first time flying by myself and I read this book on the plane and I basically read the entire thing in one sitting and I loved it so much. I haven't read it since then but I I really, really liked this book when I read it. I read it when I was like 16. I think that was a really good time to read this book and it just, it was fantastic. Next on the list is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, which I finally read this book for the first time last year and it was good. It's funny. It's awesome. I understand why everyone loves it. I have already been kind of wanting to reread this because I feel like a lot of the, the details of this book have flown out of my head and I would like to go back and revisit this. Next is another Shakespeare show. It's it's in here and it's Romeo and Juliet. I personally think is hilarious and beautifully written and I get why people don't like it because like the plot of it and the characters like they're terrible. They're so stupid. But the words, they're so good. Romeo and Juliet is really well written and I love it for that reason. And then the last thing on this list is another play. I took a, a modern drama class when I was in college and these are all plays that I read and Waiting for Godot by Samuel De Beckett was one of them. Yes, I am super pretentious because my professor was super pretentious and he pronounced it Waiting for Godot and so now I can't say Waiting for Godot, I have to say Waiting for Godot. I know that it's absurdist and it really truly is meant to be performed and not read but my god, Reading Waiting for Godot is was one of the most like torturous weird experiences ever. I just really didn't like it. It's not an enjoyable read. Don't I don't recommend it. I I have never seen a production of it, so I guess I can't say what I would think if I saw it, but I cannot imagine seeing that show and liking it. Those are all the books on the Gilmore Girls reading list that I have personally read. There are so many books on here that I would like to read and that I have been meaning to read. It's so many classics. I really have not read very many classics and it's something that I would like to change, but it's, it's hard. Out of the 339 books, I've read 18 of them. It's a low number. <laughs> I will put the link to this list below. I would love to hear how many of these books you have read or if you want to make like a rambly video just talking about your experiences with these books like I just did. That could be cool. I guess it can be like a weird tag video if anyone wants to do it like that. This was kind of fun just 
talking about some random books. Also, if there's anything on this list that I haven't read, which is most of the books, um, that you think I should, let me know. I'll just keep this list around. I would be shocked if like on my deathbed I found out that I completed every book on this list. It's not a goal of mine. I don't think that'll ever happen. But I'm curious to see how many of these I, I can get to over the next few years. So we'll see. That, yep, that's it. Goodbye. Oi with the poodles already.